Welcome to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. Today is Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. I am Pastor Crespo Jr., the research librarian for the Bronx County Historical Society. Today, I am joined by Fernando Walker, also known as Trap, OTB, a Bronx native and a Bronx writer. Fernando, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, well, my name is Fernando Walker, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I go by the graffiti artist name, a trap 167 OTB, which is my original name with trap. But I also write trap, trapster, trap one. You know, I mix it up throughout the years. But uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. Any more questions? Awesome. Now, we, we have lots of questions, and we like to start out all of our interviews by asking you, what's your family background? Where do your parents come from? Well, all, my family was born in PR, you know what I'm saying? My grandmother, my great-grandmother, you know what I'm saying? My father, my mother, they were, um, well, you know what I'm saying? I was born in 1967. By that time, they had already moved in, 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 into America, right. into New York City. You know what I'm saying? So I was born in Metropolitan Hospital at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, other than that, I can't tell you that I know they was born in PR and they moved over, but I don't know too much of that information to okay. give you. Got it. Got it. And um, so where were you born? And where did you grow up? Okay, I was born in Manhattan, in Metropolitan Hospital, right? All right. When I was a baby, you know what I'm saying? My family, right? They they were living in in in, in Spanish Harlem, by the Marqueta on One Third Street. You know what I'm saying? Right. In that area, right? And they moved from there to the Bronx on Grand Avenue and 167 on the opposite side of where I was living before I started writing graffiti. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And in that avenue, they used to do graffiti. Um, I mean, um, not graffiti, but DJ, you know what I'm saying, jams in the block. Got you know it. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? At that time, I wasn't aware of graffiti. You know what I'm saying? But I used, they used to bring trampoline because they used to close the street, right? And they used to throw block parties and all that. And in them block parties, they used to throw music real loud. Big speakers, DJ equipment. Flash used to come there. Um, Red Alert came there. All these old, old DJs, they used to perform on my avenue. You know what I'm saying? It was like part of a... You know, a way, uh, a way they used to operate on certain times. Like, they don't just operate there. They go different places. You know what I'm saying? But when they used to hit my spot in the summertime, it would happen like once or twice in the summer. You know what I'm saying? And that really motivated me into music and and, and really got me in the groove. You know what I'm saying? To To make me, you know more the person that I am today, you know, in success. Got it, got it. How, how old were you when you left? Uh, now, you said you lived on 103rd Street. Between what avenues? Uh, 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 Madison. Got it, got it. Near 103rd near Madison. Yeah, Avenue. Madison, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Now, uh, when did you leave 103rd Street? Uh, how old were Damn, you? I was I was a baby at the time. Got it, I got couldn't it. tell you that. No worries at all. So, wh where'd you move to in the Bronx? We moved to Grand Avenue, One Sixty Seventh Street. That's the avenue where I was just explaining that they used to close the block and throw block parties. Right. They used to also close the block and bring trucks in there, trampolines, roller skates, okay. and all that. I participated in that throughout the years because I grew up in, in on that avenue. But after that, we moved across the concourse to Walton Avenue. All right. That's the avenue where I started focusing more on 
writing on the wall, really looking around, you know, because I was older then. Okay. How old were you when you moved to Walton Avenue? I was like about like six, seven years old. All right, still early, still young. Yeah. Got it, got it. Do you remember what kind of meals you ate at home? Uh, Puerto Rican meals like rice and beans, chicken, um, arroz con pollo, uh, um, soup, chicken soup, um, um, pig feet. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Right, soup. Right. You know all that pig soup. Uh, we ate. My grandmother knew how to cook fried chicken, um, pork chops, all that good shit. You know. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what what kind of music did your parents listen to at home? What you enjoy? Salsa, salsa, salsa. That's what they used to listen to. Salsa, bolero. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, after the. Uh, I, I grew up. I grew up more learning how to speak English. When I went to school, I really didn't know how to speak English. I had to learn in school. Okay. Did yeah. Did you only speak Spanish at home? Yeah, that's what I knew how to speak. But when they asked me questions in English, I didn't know what they were talking about. Right. Right. So I had to learn bilingual in school to learn how to speak English. Because my grand, my I told you, my my family, they was from Puerto Rico at the time, you know what I mean? So when they put me in school, they knew how to speak it, but they didn't really show me too much English. See, I grew up with my grandmother. Okay. All right, I didn't grow up with my father and mother, you know what I'm saying? But at the time, they would visit me and visit my grandmother. At the time, see, when, we, when they moved from Manhattan to the Bronx, they they split up, and I moved with my grandmother in that in okay. the building that I'm telling you on Grand Avenue. Got it. And from there, this is where I'm at now, bro. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Yeah. So you went from the Barrio, close to the Barrio, 103rd in Madison, mm -hmm. to Grand Avenue. Yeah. Then you went to Walton Way. Walton. Walton Avenue. Walton Avenue. All right. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Do you remember uh, over on Walton Avenue the kind of kids' games that you played? Yeah, I used to play. Uh, I used to play um, stickball. You know what I'm saying, I used to play uh, street street um, football, Nerf ball. We used to play. Um, I used to, right the park was right down the block. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. from me. You know what I'm saying. 161st, and then they have my, because I'm right close to Yankee Stadium. I used to live on 167. So all I had to do was walk, walk to the corner, right? Walk down the block. The park was right there. Once I hit that park, everything in there is all parks. Yankee Stadium, Malali Pool, roller skating ring, ice skating ring, all that was there. No, no, no roller skating ring. My bad. Ice skating ring at the time. You know what I'm saying? They had a pool, ice skating ring. They had a gym. Sports used to participate in there. People used to come in there from uh, all over because at that time the teams used to compete, and they used to, and they used to come there. And 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 I used to go in there, but you had to um um be on the list to get in the building certain time but when they wasn't they allow you in the building and you could play basketball and everything you know what i'm saying or use the bathroom that's where the bathroom was at in the gym on malali's pool you know what i'm saying God. and they also had one in the gym the pool was very beautiful it was about three feet deep you know what i'm saying and it wasn't that at that time i was i was a little tall enough to swim in there no, I learned how to swim in that pool and everything. Got it, got it. And uh, what, tell me the elementary school you went to. I went, I went to uh, CES fifty three, over over on on by Grand Avenue. That's the first school I went. Okay. To right, then I moved to um um Walton, and then I went 
to um, CES 114, 114. From there, I moved to uh, Rafael Hernandez, was right under the subway. And that's where I started focusing on graffiti. Because it was right under the L. Was that middle Rafael school? Rafael Hernandez, yeah. Excuse me? Was that middle school, Rafael Hernandez? No, it was, it was a vocabulary school for Spanish and English. Okay. So that's where I learned most of English after I started, you know, focusing. Because they felt I needed a school with, with bile a bilingual school. You know what I'm saying? So they moved me there. All right. All right. And uh, can you tell me about what uh, middle school you went to? Well, from there, I went, I, I, I got suspended. That's where I started my graffiti at, right there, from Rafael Hernandez. Okay. I got suspended, started not going to school, started getting high. You know what I'm saying? At one time, you know, we'll talk later when we get into graffiti. Just focus on the questions that you're asking me right now, brother. All right. Great, great. What are your earliest... Uh... You know, did, did you ever take any art classes at a community center? In there, well, you know? uh, I focused on art, but after I was already graffiti, I was, what happened was that at, after a certain point in time, I wasn't going to school and, and I was getting in trouble too much. And my grandmother put me in Bronx Children's on Bronx State. It's, it's a children's hospital. It's like a 600 school or 800 where you can't go nowhere they keep you there but that's not that's not that's not holding me back because i used to escape and hang out with des you know what i'm saying got it got and it. used to paint trains got it. did top to bottoms doing that and all that all right D just to back up a little what year were you born 1967 my brother all right do you remember the first time you saw writing where was it and what was your impression? Well, I I focused on 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 looking around, you know what I'm saying, while I was hanging out. I'd see the name more than once. Like Clyde, Stay High, Super Cool. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh K fifty six on the buses, you know what I'm saying? When I used to ride the buses, I used to see Bear 167. You know what I'm saying? Smiley, 149, you know what I mean? Uh, these writers, uh, and especially Band 2, OTB, Delhi 167, I see that everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And when I focused, when I started riding subways, I used to see a lot of Delhi, Band 2. At that time, I used to see a lot of Mark 1, 198. I used to see uh, Rush, Rush pieces, Rush, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Pepper, Mitch 77, you know what I mean? These writers inspired me, but when I started going on the sixth line, I started seeing Common and Blade, Five and Twos, Dandy, Lee. Especially Lee, he was all over. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I used to. I, well, these these writers really caught my focus. You know what I'm saying? And I started experimenting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. First, I started. You know, they had like, you know, like a bingo stuff marker right, where right. where you stamp. I stole one of those and I wrote my name with it, and I felt good about it. So I kept doing it. At that time, I wasn't writing trap. I wrote bingo with that marker because it set it on the marker and I just went with it. Bingo was my tag, right, you know right. what I'm saying? And bingo was the name of <laughs> from there, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, I used to hang out with crews and all that. And but before we go there, what were the, uh, did, did you ever make your own markers? Yes, I have. All right. With a roll on. And, Tell me about that. How'd you do it? Okay. I used to, um, when I went to school and I was into graffiti, I used to know how to steal supermarket ink, right? From the supermarket. 
you know what I'm saying? It was permanent ink, right? And I would go in, in the drugstore and steal the band roll-on, you know what I'm saying? Roll-ons and cut the tip off, right? And take the ball out and stick the, um, right? Cut, cut the eraser that I stole from school and fold it and stick it in, right? And just flood flood the um, um roll on and and tip it. You got a marker right there, homemade. You know what I'm saying? And uh anything thick, you would have to use like a um like a band-aid box. They had the metal ones, right? You know what I'm saying? And you take all the band-aids out, right? And then you fold, you take the flat part. Uh they got this. You got to use that same eraser. They got a flat part. You fold it over like this, and you stick it in there, and it fits nice and tight. Then you got to squeeze the ink to the side of the corner, you know what I'm saying? And it floods the box. Then you tip it over, bang, you got like a uni right there. You know what I'm saying? I experimented, brother. I did my thing. Uh, I experimented with train keys and all that. I made my own. I used to know how to make my own train key because I was taught by an old graffiti writer named Thai, T-M-P, D-I-E, T-M-P. And he showed me how to create a train key from a skeleton key. You know what I'm saying? You had to file it, you know what I'm saying, in a certain angle where it was like, a triangle in in the middle, right? And then when you when you when you um stick it in the door, boom! It it works. It 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 it, it works. It works perfect. But you had to do it right. If you don't do it right, it ain't gonna work. Got it. Got it. Now over on Walton Avenue, you know, um, were there any gangs in your neighborhood that you experienced? Yeah, man. Had, Talk to me about had, the gangs. They had you bank saw. robbery gangs like. Um, Unstoppable crew, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they had uh, Savage No Man, Savage Skulls, you know what I'm saying? Up in Harlem, where I used to hang out with Dez, they had the Black Spades, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I just stuck with the crews and, and the gangs that I was familiar with. I didn't really associate with nothing out of my area because it's dangerous at that time. You never know what can happen to you. Got you know it. what I'm saying? Got it. You ever rack up any markers? Of course. What man. kind of rock markers did you rack up? And tell me about uh, your experiences. Uh, after that bingo marker, in that same store, I racked up uh, uh, what they were. <coughs> um, they were they were ma magic markers, but they, they had a special name to them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, they were permanent markers, and, and I used to take my tag. When I started tagging trap was after I seen the commercial of mouse trap, where you throw, put the little ball and it slides down and it goes around like this, you know what I'm saying, boom, and then it falls and the mouse catches it, boom, wow. and it gets caught. The game. Yeah, that. That caught my attention, and I said, "Whoa, trap! Let me try that." You know what I'm saying? So I started writing it, <laughs> All right. and that's how I got my hit trap. You know awesome. what I'm saying? Yeah. Awesome. And how, how'd you get down with OTB? And tell me what what's OTB stand for? Out to bomb. Out to bomb. When'd you get down with them? How'd you meet them? All right. The real president is Nick. You know what I'm saying? And and he 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 passed away, man. Nick Nick Nick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I never really got to meet him. I was put down by Band Two OTB. He told me I could write it at that time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I met him on on a layup on Marshula Parkway. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This when I first was was really getting into it because. At that time, I was already going by myself, like and and already piecing on trains, you know what I'm saying, and visiting yards before I met him. 
you know what I'm saying? Like the CC yard, but I had no experience in the four yard right next door to it. He taught me how to come in there when I met him. I met him on Marshula Parkway layup at, at the bench all the way at the end of the station and the layup was out there. You know what I'm saying? That's where I came and bombed that layup. And he said, yo, psh, psh, psh. yo, you right? He seen me with a bag getting ready to go down on the track. <coughs> Excuse me. Got it, got it. All right. T tell us about Wait, I'm not finished. He seen me with a bag getting ready on the crack. He said, yo, you right? Come here. Boom, I went over there. He was cool. He said, yo, what? You got ink markers? I had a pint of ink and I had a marker on me. And I had paint. I wanted to do a piece. What we did was I didn't use the paint. I used the ink markers and the ink, right? And I told him that I shared with him. And he took me in the foreyard. He he we left the station, went downstairs went around Tracy Towers and went in that yard and we did insides, bro. And after that, we we uh, made plans to hang out the next day and boom, that's how that's how I really started killing it. You know what I'm saying? With band two, bro. One of, one of the most known inside artists on the four line and throw up artists. And, and he had top to bottoms and all that at the time before me at the time and I was just learning so he taught me he was one of the first writers who taught me how to hit that yard that that the four yard perfect perfect talk to us about the other stations that you would hit or the lines that you wrote up on I I I you got the D you got the four then you had the five and twos see after I met Ben you know what I'm saying well, 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 okay. Ben wasn't the first person I met when I started writing. To bring you back, before him, there was Die TMP when I first started writing. Ben was after, after the effect, after I already knew where to go and everything. The first person who really took me, he took me to a layup on the 5 and 2 train on 225th street and we did pieces there and we used to kill the insides you know what i'm saying trap you know what i'm saying at that time yeah all right all right did, did you ever go to the writer's this bench was, this was like in 19 in 1979 when i used to go with die i met i met um band like in in late night in 80 in 80 after the after the fact that I was already bombing, you know what I'm saying, and did pieces. I already had, I was up, like I said, I already knew where to go. Like, so my next move was to go to Marshall Parkway and do some insides and do a piece by myself. Cause I was piecing, I was doing shit. You know what I'm saying, going out there and getting up. Got it, could you, could you tell us about uh the most dangerous tunnels and yards you had come going coming in and out of? Oh, well, in my time, it wasn't dangerous, man. It was easy. But you had to be careful because the Hickey and Ski, fat man, you know what I'm saying, on the left, what they do is they stay inside the train. And when you go in there, they'll hide, right? And, right, if you walk into their trap, You'll walk in that car, one will block you here, boom, and the other one will stop you on the other side, and you'll get caught. A fat man one time, we ran in, me and Di, on 42nd by the shuttle, in that, in that, in the shuttle, by where, where you transfer, they had a layup in, in that tunnel. We went in there one day, right? Boom. Right, and we were gonna kill the insides and bomb the shuttles. Die knew how to do it. He, it was his idea, right? And we went in that tunnel, and when we went in, right, I was right behind Die, right? 
and died. What he did was before before he he walked in there at at one of those cars before on, like in the first train. We didn't just go in in that first car yet. We went we walked around and picked up a stick. You know what I'm saying? They was laying around. They had a conductor stick laying around, and he grabbed it because he found it right. Lucky for that conductor stick, you know what I'm saying? Because when we came back and went in that first car and I was behind him, Fat Man was there and tried to grab him. And he managed to swing the stick and smack his arms. That's what he told me. He smacked his arms and he wasn't able to grab him and he ducked. And we, because at that time, to climb in the train, you had to either remove the chain or split, or split the car open and get in under between the cars, right? So that's what we was doing. And when we got under and he like opened the door, excuse me, right? When he got under and he like opened the door, you know what I'm saying? I was scared when, when, when he said, oh shit, ran, run. You know what I'm saying? And, and he, he swung that stick. We didn't get caught, we got away. We got ready there. You know what I'm saying? That's a dangerous spot right there. You know what I'm saying? That's that shuttle tunnel. You know what I'm saying? They used to sit on people there. You know what I'm saying? But if they wasn't there, boom, you got to lay up, kill inside shuttles. What they do is they park it, but they don't they don't usually run too long because they'll buff it immediately. But it's good if you got a camera and take pictures. Got it. Got it. And were you known for any particular lettering styles? Yeah, I I used to do a lot of trap, trap tag, regular tags, you know what I'm saying? And uh, piecing, I do a throw up pieces, you know what I'm saying? I, I try to do like a little fancy style and everything to make my my name look, look presentable, you know what I mean, at that time. You know what I mean? I used to mix it up. I learned. I was learning wild style from Tracy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? At the time, and uh, Mitch taught me wild style, so I was mixing it up. You know what I'm saying? I did a little bit of everything. Who's Mitch? Mitch seventy seven was the president of Latin Action. You know what I'm saying? I met him. You know what I'm saying? Latin Action at, was a writing crew. Yeah, Latin action. I met him on the bench, him, and uh, he took me with him. He met up with PJ, right? I met both of them at the same time. And they said, yo, I asked them, can I come? They were going paint racking. They let me go, man. And I got away with some paint in the store. And I went that night. They said, you still hanging? I, I stuck with them. And they took me in the tunnel, man. You know what I'm saying? And Mitch brought me home before before we went peacing. He let me hang out. I was just a baby. You know what I'm saying? He trusted me. That How old way. were you when you were out there peacing? Well, well, when I first started doing my first piece, I was like 12, 13 years old. And it was just a little stick like a little white and, and red or white and black little stick letters like it used to look like toothpicks right. but it, 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 it you could read that it says trap and it wasn't that high i couldn't reach that much right, right. you know what i mean but it was there you know what i mean and i did my first piece on the train i wish i had pictures yeah. if i had pictures i would definitely document that now when you did pieces and you hit the trains did you did you uh, sketch them out in a black book? How, how did your process go of doing a piece right. before you went out there all right. and hit the all tracks? Right. All right, all right. In the beginning, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to sketch and all that. I learned that after the fact, you know what I'm saying? I had brought outlines there to do real important cards and pieces. Most of my, most of my uh, 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 pieces were done straight out of the mind, you know what I'm saying? From pieces that I already knew how to sketch on paper. 
But when I wanted to do something perfect, I bring that sketch with me. You know what I mean? So that I know I can get it right. You know, in the measurements mm -hmm. of how I want to do the piece. Got it. Got it. Did you ever use any characters in your in your piecing? Well, I didn't do them, but God did them. And I attempted to do my own character one day. I did like, like, like it was like the dinosaur from Cheech Wizards. Uh huh. I did a trap, and I did that dinosaur. It looked it like a dinosaur, but it came out tacky. <laughs> it wasn't perfect, you know. It was tacky, you know. Yeah. Were, were there any particular spray paint brands that you enjoyed using? Yeah, like Sparvus, Red Devil, you know what I'm saying? Uh, epoxy. Those were some of the first paints that I started learning how to rack. Because at that time, those paints, those are old. You can't even find them no more. Then I learned how to rack up Krylon, rust -Oleum, And those are the two paints that I stuck with. Crown on Rustolian. At time, I used to use epoxy because they had purple in epoxy uh -huh. and they had flesh. They had colors like violet and epoxy. They were real beautiful and solid. You know what I'm saying? And I used to always carry them. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I, speak to me about paint racking, bro. You know what I'm saying? How I used to come up with the paint. Talk to me. Go ahead. Well, like I said, I'm not an angel. I stole my paint. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? When when I first stole my paint, I used to live on 167. They had a they had a Woolworth on 170th Street, right under the L. Like I said, right. I used to go to school at at um Rafael Hernandez, and that was right under the L, one one station away, right. So what I did was. I used to sneak on the train. We used, I used to be able to slide up under the turns, under the, under the spinning turnstile, right? And slide up under because I could fit. You know what I mean? Or on the side, I could fit. And get on that train and take it one stop. Go downstairs and go in that Woolworth, right? And steal cans. You know what I mean? But, excuse me, in, other, in, in order to steal the can. You had to know how to pick the lock, the glass, because they had a glass. What I used to do was I used to push it in and pull the glass over and slide the lock in and push and push it and automatically opens everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then right, right there, Red <laughs> Devil. Got it. Got it. Did, did, did you use any special caps? Did you do anything in particular well, I didn't learn to your how caps? to use caps until, until um, Dai, Dai taught me how to use a fat cap. Okay. He introduced me to a GIF one, and I went in the store and racked them for him. You know, I stole like about six or seven of them. So I, I, what I did was I cracked the top, and I used to just bite them off and keep them in my mouth, put the cap on, put it back, take the next one. And then I put them in my pocket and walk out the store or leave them there and walk out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. at, at, at one time, I did them like this, but it was slow. It was slow to take them off like that. Right. So then I started just biting them off, putting the cat can back. I did it with Panda Magic. Um, they had... Um, they had um, they had, um, okay, when you get the jet, they had a real jet form that they were, um, they had a can, right? The can was, um, 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 Mazzola nonstick, right? You had to remember this can because it's an old can, you know what I'm saying? Mazzola nonstick. On that can, you take, you pop that can at that time. In the 70s, and it had a white cap. It was round. It wasn't like like the regular fat caps that you get from a Niagara. Mm -hmm. It was round. That cap is real wide. With that cap, you do top to bottoms. You do blockbusters. You you got because 
It doesn't kill too much pain, but after a while, your can will be dead. You know what I'm saying? But it, you know, it, it really sparked, sparked, sparked why I was able to paint so beautiful at the time when I was doing my pieces. Because I had the right cap. I knew how to steal Niagara. I knew how to steal um, GIF homes. I, I knew what skinny caps to use. You know what I'm saying? Because I learned from other writers who showed me what cap to use at the time. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, so were there any other than Die and Bantu, did you have any other mentors in writing? Yeah. Uh, uh, Bear 167. You know what I'm saying? May he rest in peace. Uh, Smiley 149. BS 119. Huh? Can you talk to us about any experiences writing with those mentors? If you ever yeah, hell yeah. I went. I used I used to tag up with Bear 167. You know what I'm saying? And he used to take me to Fashion Motor. He was the first person who took me to like a real art gathering, like a studio or something like that. And we used to tag up in the studio. And at that time, I when I was hanging with Bear, I was young. You know what I'm saying? And from there, I, I met writers there, you know what I'm saying? And we used to go tagging and bombing on the streets and stuff like that. That's what you wanted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your experiences with different uh, writers, I, I, you know, the trains I, you hit, when you did it. Okay, let's go on the subway. I peaced with Cope 2. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I met Cope 2 hanging out on the subway, man, riding. You know what I'm saying? We hung out. At that time, we weren't that close, you know what I'm saying? But I met him, and we got together, you know what I'm saying? And we went, and we went paint racking, you know what I mean? And I took him to a spot in Manhattan, and I racked 10 cans of paint, you know what I mean? And I told him to wait, right? And he didn't go nowhere. He stayed there. He didn't steal my cans from me. He didn't try to rob me. Like I said, he was honest from the jump. So, and I went back in and I saw like four or five more cans and I had enough for both of us. And we took those cans and went on Kingsbridge layup. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we did a cope and a trap. I did a, a LA trap and he did a cope. You know what I mean? And, and at that time, he made that crew, Kings Destroy. You know what I mean? I was with him when he made it. I was one of the first persons who really knew what that crew was. Because at that time, I used to write K, right, with a circle. They used to stand for King. Because I had managed to become King, taking insides with Band 2 at the time. So I used to keep that, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that, that, Turk, that tag up around my, near my name. And... He, you know, I don't know if that's where he got it from, but yo, the guy really did it, man. He became popular, and he did, like he said, he made that crew, and he destroyed. Like, he really bombed. All right, all right. Can you tell us, and when uh, was the piece, when you when did you make a piece that you're most proud of? You know, talk to us about that. The all one right. that just stood all out in your right, original. Right, when I did my first top to bottom, window down, whole car, in in the foyard, with my with my boy Nitty, he was a, was stocky black Moreno, you know what I'm saying? We were brothers, tight, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he used to bomb with me. He used to write Nitty. I used to give him his own paint, like two or three cans, and he was straight. And I take five or six. And I do pieces in, in pools, handball courts with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And one day, I knew how to bomb the yard, so I said, let's go to the yard and do a top to bottom. I took them in there, and right at that, excuse me, at that time, right? You no, know, I gotta get, I get hyped to talk about this day right here. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right at that time, at the four yard, the gate used to be wide open. There, there wasn't no booth or no security. You could just walk right in. And in that first lane, right, one or two cars in there, 
that first lane, the cars were real close together. You know what I mean? And and with his help and the booth and standing on the shoulder and holding on from car to car, I was able to, what I did, because I went in the lane with the third rails. So I was able to stand on the third rails and reach at the time. I was a little tall enough to do it. And if it wasn't from the third rails, I, I was short. Mm -hmm. I was short. So the third rails gave me the leverage. So I was able to do a trap fiend or, or you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you no, know, I did a Femi bummer, top to bottom. A Femi bummer, F E M E bummer, top to bottom, whole car. You know what I'm saying? It was a, a name not that was a trap. You know what I'm saying? That by that were different names because the, the trap is not just the name that I brought mm -hmm. that I used to write, right? You know what I'm saying? So. And to, to make a piece in a different name and be able to paint the whole train, that experience was was a beautiful one, man. You know what I'm saying? What I did was I uh, I made it like what I did was I I I uh, I did the piece, right? Then what I did was I filled it all in one color on one side and one color on the other side. Then I made like, 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 I blended yellow and red to make it look like flames coming mm -hmm. in, coming in like into the middle of it. You know what I mean? And that car, I never really got to see it run because after that, I used to start bombing in, in the um, tunnels, on the, on the, on the all, all tunnels. And all that, I was hitting leather lines then. I just switched, I switched, I left, I left that and switched to another line so I could get my name more popular mm -hmm. on, on INDs and IR and I and, and 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 all that. Got it, got it. And the the word graffiti, what do you think about that word? What does it mean to you? It means uh a challenge. You know what I'm saying? To, be able to prove who you are, what what you can what you can do with art. You know what I mean? How you can produce. You know what I'm saying? Graffiti. How can you outwit? You know what I'm saying? How can you um, defeat? How can you become the most popular? Got it. Got it. And from your time, you you were writing in 1979. How has writing changed over time, the culture? You know, what's your impression at, of how it's at changed? At one time, it was easy. Like yards, layups, you know what I'm saying? But then they stopped, they stopped putting the trains in the middle track. They eliminated that. You have to catch it if they park it there mm -hmm. and leave it overnight. They still do it in the tunnels, but they, they don't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, they put security guard and fences at the yards, so it became difficult to get in there. But still, people find a way to do it. It's not stoppable yet. You know what I'm saying? There is a way. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like I said, you know what I'm saying if you focus and you search, you will find a way in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if you can't get in, don't. Don't risk it, because you might get caught. You know what I'm saying? It's also dangerous. Like I said, it's not always a definite that you're going to get in there because it's, it's, it's sealed off now, and they got the security. You know how to get around them. You know what I'm saying? Then you could get in there. People know how to flash wallets and get in there. What's up, my brother? I'm back again. Uh, what was the question, man? Just to be, just so I could know what to tell these people for you, man. You, you know, I, I, I had originally asked, you know, what was your opinion about, you know, graph writing? You know, how the culture's changed over time. You, you, you were telling me how hard it's, it is now to get into the, uh, yeah, to get into it, the yards. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. The mayors, man. Like Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg, Mayor Koch. 
at, point, at that time, man, cop shit was still easy. You know what I mean? That's those are the mans that I used to really kill. <laughs> Cause they they really didn't know what to do at that time. But uh got it. You know what I'm saying? Uh uh man Dinkins and them, you know what I'm saying, the black mans, they really sealed they really did they really did seal sing it off. You know what I'm saying? Bloomberg was really the man. He really sealed it off. You know what I'm saying? But uh you know, other than that, you know what I'm saying? I try I try my best, you know what I'm saying? If I knew an opportunity to get in one of them yards, I do. But I'm waiting. I'm still going to paint trains. It ain't never gonna die in me. You know what I'm saying? That always gonna stay alive with me. Trains is part of my blood. I will come back and bomb them. Trust me. Got it, got it. Anything about your writing career, I haven't asked you, you want to talk about? Right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm into uh, canvases, you know what I'm saying? People like to hit me up, you know what I mean? I'm I'm famous, you know what I'm saying, for uh, 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 graffiti videos and books that were made, like the first graffiti video, Subway Art, right, right. and the book, no, the, the book Subway Art, and Star Wars, the um the movie, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you it, know a uh, person who really, 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 really put that together was um Martin Cooper and and Henry. They made that book. You know what I'm saying? Person I got into when 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 I met that did that that video with me was Dez. You know what I'm saying? He passed away on me, COVID nineteen, bro. Really broke my heart, man. You know what I'm saying? And I really did. I did a, a dedication piece for him. We bought five and turned. We did it on one of the phony trains, but you know what I'm saying? It, it looked it looked real beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And I went to his funeral. You know what I'm saying? Um, I went to his um yeah, I went to his um his hair his his hair his, his, his thing, this setting and everything. Mm -hmm. and I met some of his family there, you know what I'm saying? His brothers were there, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah. like I said, man, you know what I'm saying, life goes on, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I gotta live with what he taught me as a young boy and take that and put it together with what I know now and continue to draw art and function, you know what I'm saying, like I'm supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm graffiti forever. I ain't gonna never stop. You know what I'm saying? I'm always gonna take a tag here and there, do a throw up here and there. And when I'm ready, I do my get my cans together and I do my piece. You know what I mean? Either subway or wall. We like to end all of our interviews by asking, what does the Bronx mean to you? Uh, Bronx, Bronx is is what really created graffiti, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if it really came from the Bronx, but that's where I learned it from. You know what I mean? Right, and it right. means a lot. Heritage in the Bronx, music, all that, Bronx. That's where that's where I where I picked it up from, and I keep that tradition with me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always going, you know, represent the Bronx. Got it, got it. You know, back when we started uh, doing the first interviews for this project, uh, one of the writers, Olga, gave us a black book, and so we like to ask all the artists to write your tag for us. You know, sure, we'd appreciate it. Sure. Ooh. Here's our black book right here. I got it. There you go. Hey, let me <coughs> quick draw for you right here. Man.
Let's take a look at it. Nice. Thank you. Saying, one of the originals, bro. Trap OTB. Thank I'll you so much. TP. Don't forget, man. That's me, bro. When you see that, you know who that is. I'm shining, baby. Thank you for being here. Peace.